Hey brewers, it's Paul here. Today we are gonna brew up a coffee blonde ale. That's right. We're gonna take delicious coffee beans, locally roasted, you wanna get them fresh. And we're gonna make a blonde ale in the Brewzilla Gen 4. So uh, this recipe, fairly straightforward. We got nine pounds of two-row, eight ounce carrot pills, five ounce of honey malt, a couple ounces of saws just for bittering and a little later in the boil, USO5. And then, uh, yeah, our fresh coffee beans that we are going to dry hop with. I just happened to be reading the new issue of Brew Your Own Magazine. Fantastic magazine. They do not sponsor us, but if they wanted to, I probably wouldn't say no. I saw a recipe from Sly Fox Brewing for their coffee blonde ale, and I figured, hey, let's give it a shot. For our water, I went with a pretty balanced profile, around you know 50 to 60 ppm of calcium about 10 to 15 magnesium, around 30 sodium, 56 chloride, and around 70 for our uh, SO4. Mash pH target of about 5.45, just for those of you interested. I know I don't usually mention my water profiles, I figured I might as well. So we wanna mash at 150, so I'm right around 152 here. We'll add our grains and then we'll be right back after that. So I have uh, 19 liters of mash water, that's about uh, 5 US gallons of water uh, that's dechlorinated of course. And let's go ahead and stir in our grains. Make sure we don't have any dough balls. My giant metal mash paddle, somebody made this for me, it's really awesome, be a good weapon. All right, so giving that a nice good stir. There's just under, what, like 10 pounds of grain, so we shouldn't have any issues with clumping or any of that sort of thing, but got to make sure. Yeah, beautiful. All right, we're going to adjust our flow right here. That looks pretty good. Turn off the pump, we'll get our lid on and we'll set a 60 minute timer. All right, start our pump back up. We're right around 150, so that's perfect. You might notice I don't have the Brazilla jacket on here. Uh, that's because we went to start shooting and it turns out somebody had a boil over on their previous brew, probably Brad, and decided, uh, hey, he wasn't gonna clean it that day. When you're done with your mash done, spray it right away, then I don't have to fucking brush it. So it's drying outside right now. Okay, so we'll be back in an hour. All right, so it's been an hour. We're ready to start our sparge. So obviously turn the pump off here, get this out of our way. And I've heated up two and a half US gallons of water to sparge with, which is around 9.5 liters. Uh, this is a five US gallon or 19 liter batch. And we've heated that up to about 170 Fahrenheit. I don't know off the top of my head what that is in Celsius, sorry. Let's get this up another level. It's a nice feature on the uh, Gen 4 having the two sets of feet here so you can bring it up halfway. Let some of the wort drain out and then bring it up again when it's a little bit lighter. We are going to set this to a boil now. So if you're like me and you don't do any sort of super fancy sparging, you're just grabbing the, your sparge water with a pitcher and just dumping it over like this. What you can do if you have a kitchen scale or any scale that's somewhat accurate, put your pitcher on there and calibrate it. So we know that one liter of water weighs one kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds. So weigh the water when you get to your one kilogram or 2.2 pounds, put your marker and then do this same thing for the second liter. That way you have an accurate way to measure your sparge water for like, you know, a couple bucks at the dollar store. So I'm just gonna, gonna continue until I have nine and a half liters of sparge water through here. All right, we'll just let that drain and uh, let it get to a boil and we'll be right back. So we're at a boil. I'm going to add the 60 minute one ounce saws edition or 28 grams. 
Uh, set a timer, put the recirculation armor there so it can get sanitized during the boil. Hey Google, set a timer for one hour. All right, so we're just gonna let this do its thing. I'm gonna clean out the grain basket while I'm waiting. And then with 10 minutes left in the boil, we're gonna add another one ounce or 28 grams of saws. We're gonna add our chiller in to sanitize it. Oh sweet, that wasn't too bad. We're rolling. So we got 10 minutes left on the timer. I'm gonna put in my immersion chiller. And also at the same time, the Grainfather Whirlpool slash aerator. Uh, it's a great tool thingy for uh, uh, chilling your work faster. Put it on a drill, make it Whirlpool, it'll chill faster. Uh, and then we're also going to add in our 10 minute hop addition. Another one ounce of saws. And what the heck, might as well add a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. Whirlflock tablet's just a natural clarifier. And then the uh, yeast nutrient is just nutrients and uh, minerals and stuff that'll help the yeast have a nice and happy fermentation. That looks about right. Okay, so we'll wait 10 minutes and we'll start chilling. So end of our boil, we're gonna start the pump, open it wide on the ball valve there so you get a really quick recirculation, turn off the heater and pump our cold water through the chiller. Uh, I'm gonna go grab my drill, I'll be right back. All right, so I have this attached to my drill. A little bit of juice here, we don't wanna go too crazy. So I'll do that for about 10 seconds, then I'll let it sit for a few minutes and I'll just keep doing that until we are down to our pitching temperature. Uh, this saves like quite a bit of time doing this as opposed to just leaving your wort sitting there uh, without recirculating around the coils. It doesn't have to be this fancy. You could take a obviously clean sanitized spoon or paddle and get the same sort of effect. So we'll just let that chill and then we'll put it into the fermenter. So we've chilled down to our pitching temp which is just under 68 Fahrenheit, which is I think around 20 Celsius. Disconnect our chiller, stop the pump real quick. Now all my fancy fermenters are taken at the moment, so we're just gonna use a trusty old bucket. While we are doing that, I'll take a quick gravity reading. What do we got here? Got right around, looks like 1.046. We were shooting for 1.048, so I'll call that close enough. Final uh, ABV of this beer should be right around like the four and a half, somewhere around there. So nice sessionable beer. All right, so we're transferred over. We're just gonna pitch our yeast. Let this sit for about 10 days. That should give it plenty of time to ferment out. And then we're going to dry hop it uh, with three or four ounces of fresh, locally roasted coffee beans. Something with low acidity like Sumatra, but just go to your local coffee roaster, tell them you're putting it in beer and ask for their recommendations. There's a few ways we could have went about this. We could have added it at the end of the boil. I chose not to do that. I think you're gonna get a lot of bitterness if you do it that way. We could have also did a cold steep, but I kind of think that that coffee might be oxidized just sitting in your fridge or whatever. So I decided not to go that route. You could try that, you know, let me know in the comments if that's how you do it. We could have ground this up and put it in there. You would probably get more flavor, but then you gotta deal with all that coffee floating around in your beer and how to filter that out or whatever. So I decided to do somewhere between three and four ounces of coffee that we're just gonna add 10 days after we pitch the yeast, so the beer should be pretty much fermented out. We'll add it directly into the fermenter. They should just sink into the tube at the bottom. We'll let that sit for three to five days, and then we'll keg it and uh, we'll taste it. 
So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about the process or this recipe or anything, let me know in the comments down below. And other than that, we're gonna wait a couple weeks, keg it up, and then taste it. Okay, so it's been 10 days, and we are gonna add our coffee beans, obviously clean and sanitized funnel. And we wanna minimize oxygen here, so I'm just gonna take off the rubber bung, pour them in, and then quickly put it back. And if I didn't mention it, in the brew video, obviously, the fermenter was also clean and sanitized. Take off our airlock. Put the funnel real quick, pour in our beans. All right, then quickly put our airlock back on. Let it sit for another three to five days and we'll keg it up and uh, give her a tasting. All right, so today's the day we finally get to taste this. I'm rushing it a bit. It's only been in the keg for about three days, but I had it hooked up at 30 PSI, backed it down to 10 and we should be good to go. Uh, so let's see what she looks and tastes like. looks over carbonated so i probably should have only did two days at 30 psi but i forgot to turn it down uh, that's okay we'll just wait a bit let the head subside i'll pour another glass all right that's a little better that looks good, a little bit hazy. Uh, it's probably just because it's young uh, or maybe that's what the coffee beans do to it. I don't brew with coffee beans that often. Usually when I do, it goes into something dark. Uh, that's why the idea of a coffee blonde really appealed to me. I like coffee. I like, you know, lighter beers, especially in the summertime. So let's go in here. It smells like coffee a lot. That smells delicious. That is very good. I highly recommend trying this recipe. Let me get the phone. Going for another little sippy poo here. Oh, this smells so good. If you like coffee, that is. And beer. Mm. It goes so well together. You can taste a little bit of the, the honey malt in there. It's got a nice mouthfeel and a really rich coffee note. Um, I was saying use three to four ounces of fresh coffee. If you want a really strong coffee flavor, do that. That's probably how I would rebrew it. But if you want a lighter, uh, you know, coffee, don't maybe try two ounces for your first go around. Uh, either way, this turned out way better than I even imagined. I'm happy I have a full keg of this now to enjoy. Uh, you know, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I try to answer every single one of them. Also, if you're in Canada and want to order this beer kit from us, it's on our website uh, labeled as a Coffee Blonde Ale. You can get it in all grain or extract. Cheers.